Dutton City, a borough beloved by demons. An enduring chaos thrives in this place, yet is sealed away from the rest of the world. However, that good book so many humans rely on says it best. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. The problem is finding the key to unlock that detestable seal. The bloodline of the Hell's Monkey is the only solution. A descendant must be located immediately. Excuse me. Sir, is everything all right? My apologies. Continue with your report. Yes, sir. We would like at this juncture to move forward onto the second portion of our annual ghost report. Ghost number 36, also known as Big Brown Eye. This was a metaphysical manifestation of grudges held by plumbers who, crushed by copious amounts of fecal matter clogging drains throughout the city, suffocated to death as the waste tragically obstructed their intake of oxygen. This entity then proceeded to disgustingly possess all the feces in the city. Its hideous essence left witnesses and all would-be attackers helpless to do anything but vomit uncontrollably, making it a rather impressively potent ghost. However, the theme I am sure you have at this point perceived pervades those unabashedly crude, hopelessly delusional, horrifyingly idiotic ne'er-do-well angel trollops blasted our big brown eye to bits. Of course they did. Don't tell me you honestly put significant faith in fecal matter. Oh, sir, no, of course not. How comforting. Continue. Yes, sir. Ghost number 37, also known as the Fast and Not So Furious. This specter was the manifestation of a grudge held by a speedy and overly ticketed taxi driver who accidentally drove off of a cliff. In the end, he was blasted to bits after what could be referred to as failing to yield. He was the very definition of idiocy in action. What a mockery. Continue. Ghost number 38, also known as Queen Bee. She was the manifestation of a female student's lust for power. Once reigning over the school as its most popular attendee, or queen, she was attacked and killed by pet bees belonging to a nerd on whom she frequently picked. Her plot to reclaim her crown was thwarted by those horrendous angels and a geek named Brief. She was also blasted into bits. As though being the most popular girl in high school is a pinnacle of power, doomed from the start by flawed assumption. She was a waste of a ghost if ever I've seen one. Right. So, ghost number 39, or Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf, are the manifestation of grudges held by a prostitute and her pimp. Apparently, they were eaten by a wolf while soliciting sex in a park. Yes. Now that is something to behold. Tighter. Tighter. My socks. Is it just me, or is there something wrong with the mayor? I don't know. Perhaps he's acting in such a fashion because he's discovered a way to dispose of those revolting angels. Yes, perhaps. Enough chatter! Shall we continue? <clears throat> yes, sir. Ghost number 40, who is, well, are actually a group of demon seamen. Not of the sea, but of the sperm. They felt mistreated, so they manifested themselves into nasty little creatures and raided the tissue plant in an attempt to avenge their pointless deaths. Sadly, they were overcome and blasted into tiny, tiny bits. Sperm can't be trusted. There are strong swimmers and there are weak swimmers. So true, sir. Moving on. Ghost number 41, the Diet Ghost. She was the amalgamation of the bitterness found in women who put their faith in fad diets, only to end up atrociously obese. One of our more impressive attackers, she opened a cake shop serving specialized fat-enhancing treats and even managed to turn one of those floozy angels into a gargantuan abomination. But alas, she was blasted like all the rest. Master, at this time, do you have any comments for us? No, just continue. The mayor is not in best mood, sister. Let's just get through this, shall we? Yes, that is my current objective. Next, of course, is ghost number 42, the fabulous lingerie ghost. He was born from the grudge of a teenage lingerie fanatic who, after some of his more popular peers stole his underwear during the school's first unmentionables run, died when lightning mysteriously struck his bare penis. Quite by accident, he managed to put those loathsome angels in a precarious position, but yet again, that brief boy assisted them, and the tackier of the two angels blasted him to pieces. So next we have ghost number 43, Oscar the Snot. This disgusting... This is pathetic. How many inconsequential, mediocre ghosts can we have in one year? At what point did our ghosts, ghosts belonging to demons, sink into the pit of inadequacy? When I was young, they still kept the spirit of primordial chaos alive. They were tough, creative, strong, and silent creatures of power. But now, apparently those days are over. Just look at this disaster laid out before me. These ghosts don't even understand the meaning of chaos! It makes me long for my younger days. If I had a heart, it would be sad. 
Let us end this nonsense already. By which you mean? By which I mean. You don't plan to continue wasting my time with these useless reports of yours, do you? Because I have better things to do with my time than sit here and listen to your repetitive failures. No, sir. Of course not. Up with his mood swings is worse than dealing with those angel bitches. Sister, your language, please. Oh, I'm so sorry. You're quite right. All this reporting and anxiety has loosened my tongue. You know, like after fellatio. Far too loose, dear. Fastener, darling. Would you bring us a sofa? Oh, and some wine, too. <laughs> While we're at it, a little caviar blue cheese and crackers wouldn't hurt. Finally, it's a devil were gorgeous. Look at you, sister. You're so shiny. Oh, you're always so sweet to me. But if anything, your beauty radiates as intensely as the dark sun of hell. Gross, it's that nerd again. He's like a little puppy traipsing after them wherever they go. You know what they say. Fools only attract other fools. <laughs> what is it about them? Well, their vocabularies are spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, if I laugh too much, my cheeks will start to hurt. Would you like me to rub them for you, my darling? No, stop that. My face will be as red as yours, you drunkard. I was born this way. And if anything, I'd say yours is a brighter crimson. Do you think so? I am rather flushed. And you're burning up. Here, allow me to take your clothes off. No, no. You don't like that? Are you sure? I thought it was your favorite. I prefer caviar. Stay true to your curiosity. That is our rule. Oh, oh my, that's an interesting place for it. I've also got an oozing ripe fig from the Diablo orchard for you, sister dearest. Yes, that's not all that's oozing and ripe, is it? I just remembered. I have something for you, too. Do you remember that creamy milk from the black goat at Satan's Fest? Do I? Rub it into every fold, every single bag. <laughs> how free and uninhibited you are. I would be proud if I thought you had earned such privileges. You misunderstand, sir. This is simply an evaluation of our skills. Exactly, as well as an elaborate training simulation relating to future developments. Oh, I forgot to ask one critically important question. What has your research into the Hell's Monkey blood descendant revealed? The Hell's Monkey descendant? Uh, well, we um, are currently investigating the matter to our utmost ability. <laughs> Oh, girls, it isn't nice to lie. Give me a little credit, will you? Why don't you go reflect upon your ineptitude? Mr. Mayor, no! Anything but that! Ghosts, demon sisters, all completely useless. I still know nothing concerning the Hell's Monkey Descendant. Oh, my God, my having place! <laughs> it appears that in the darkest despair, there can be found the darkest hope. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Hooker Angels. You have finally collected your heavenly coin quota. Now that your mission on Earth is complete, you are free. So, there you go. I'm guessing that means you can probably go back to heaven. Seriously? Time has come to get the fuck out. 
Move your asses over here and kneel before the altar. So this is goodbye to all my earthly fucking. Wow. That side project just prematurely blew up in my face. You really are totally lame, you know. You have us everything. I mean, you couldn't give less of a shit about killing ghosts. Why would a thousand dicks be any different? <laughs> Oh, guess what? I have bad news, Panny. Heaven is less than pleased with your actions as a degenerate whore. You want to show your worthy? Go collect your own coins! Until you prove yourself, you shall not pass! <laughs> this is such bullshit! So in the slut, big deal! Who are they to judge? And why in fuck's name do you seem so happy about all this flaccid face? How can I not be happy? Penny and Brief are back together again. It may not be a big deal to you, but I've never felt more alive! You can cut me, Spag Muffin, help! Alright, you want it so bad? You can have it. Kill all the ghosts you want, Geek Boy. I'm fucking out of here. Hey! Fancy, come back! I don't want to see your ass until you've collected some heaven coins. No oh, fair. Damn it. I figured I'd be at a thousand by now. I did not appreciate that at all. Well, look who's here. You better have some fucking heavens. How could I? I'm just a human. I don't stand a chance against that many ghosts all by myself. Fuck that! Don't give me excuses! Dude, you are the most useless guy I've ever met. That is not true. Oh, hey. Hello, this is Briefers. Hold on. Again with the party? No. No, I told you! I don't want to go! On top of that, I don't even know her! I don't care about your stoop! So close, just one more guy to go. Okay, now where in the hell am I gonna meet him? Whether you like it or not. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to take a moment to thank you all for being here tonight at the Rock Foundation Celebrity Event. But more importantly, I have an announcement to make. The daughter of my good friend, the mayor, is engaged to be married to none other than my own cherished son, Briefers Rock. <laughs> Briefers, where are you, son? What are you doing out in the audience, son? Come up to the stage and greet your bride-to-be immediately. I can't do that, Dad. I'm sorry, but I refuse to marry a girl I don't even like. Excuse me? I mean it, Dad. I'm not gonna be your puppet anymore. If you're trying to embarrass me, son, you've succeeded. I don't care. You can listen to me for a change. That's the girl I want to marry. Huh? <laughs> not her. Why does she always have to ruin everything? Oh, sister, please. We need to move on to phase two. <laughs> How could you do this to me in front of all these people? I can't believe my fiancé's been stolen by a troll up. Darling, reconsider. Human, how dare you cast me aside? Oh, sister, 
no! Your horns are showing! I don't care, this is taking far too long! Huh. Bitch, what are you doing here? We should be asking you the same question! It appears there is no need to carry on this ridiculous pretense any longer! Now, once and for all, you will realize who is in control! You freaks are way too impressed with yourselves. Bring it, because I'm in the mood for a demon massacre! Don't say I didn't warn you, Red Twas! You're going down! That creature doesn't comprehend the situation she's in, does she? I'd cry if it wasn't so funny. Who's open now, bitches? <laughs> Sorry about that, Panty. It's just I don't think you stand much of a chance against them without stalking. How the hell do you know about stalking? Hold on a minute. Why are you acting like you've forgotten who I am? I'm free. It's me. Evoy, <laughs> that's you? Get the fuck out. I didn't need your damn help. Not to be rude, but yes, you did. They were going to kill you. I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. Now, oh, come on. Let's get out of here before they find us. Fine. At least we should be safe out here. <laughs> Betty, did you know you're touching me? Yeah, I know. I'm not sure why, but I needed to. Don't worry, I promise I'll protect you. There's no way I'd let the woman I love get hurt. You know I love you, right? I mean, it's kind of weird to say like this, but I figured you already knew. I've loved you ever since we first met. Ah! Please stop talking. I want to see your face again. Hi, Panty. You are so damn awkward, but 1000 might as well be you. The first time I saw you, I fell in love. So I fell in you. Shit! Ouch! What? Wait, everything's fine. We'll just try a different position. Just as I thought. Girl, you've been re-virginized. Yep. The good news is you're no longer a skank. The bad news is you got a hymen again. Hymen? You're fucking with me, right? No, I'm not fucking with you. And by the way, you should count your slut blessings. Brief didn't actually get all up in there. Hmm? A failure! I'd expect no less from an angel raised by you. However, it was rather kind of your protege to assist with the boy's awakening. What are you doing here, corset? It's been a long time, hasn't it, Garterbelt? In truth, we haven't met since then, have we? Mayor? I didn't know that you knew Garter. Oh, yes. Now, my boy, come to me. <laughs> uh, 
It appears the descendant of the Hell's Monkey has been awoken by an angel's kiss. Just a little nudge. <laughs> Finally, it's mine!